Chris Erickson is the CEO of Climate Earth. It's a leading carbon accounting firm. Chris is a experienced uh, CEO, uh, having uh, led technology industry at both a large Fortune 500 company as well as uh, software startups and helped uh, and led them to going public. Chris uh, and his leadership with Climate Earth and team over at Climate Earth has really focused on a breakthrough intellectual property where it's a holistic view at uh, looking at carbon. Um, and mapping it to the financial statements so that you can see both the human impact and the profit at the same time. Um, so uh, Chris is going to share uh, in-depth case studies, and hopefully that will uh, inspire you to do the same and accelerate progress at your organization or look for ways to uh, collaborate with everyone on the call. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Okay. Uh, thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. We've seen an amazing transformation in the last 12 months. A year ago, carbon was viewed as a metric for doing good, and I think today it's emerging and, in fact, already is for many companies moved from being a do-good metric to a strategic metric for managing a business. Uh, a lot of this has to do with Walmart's push, but I think some of the early adopters have found that there's enormous advantage in managing the carbon, especially in the supply chain, around cost avoidance, revenue generation. Uh, designing new products and innovating, and of course, customer satisfaction and reputation and culture. Um, I hope we'll t try and tie everything back today to these um, benefits of carbon accounting as I dive into specific uh, case studies uh, in, in clients and customers that we've worked with. In terms of the agenda today, I am going to make a couple slides on the basics of carbon accounting to set the foundation a discussion of carbon metrics and how they can be applied generally, and then a deep dive into a couple of cases, and then a wrap-up. Climate Earth was founded a couple years ago with the notion that supply chain carbon accounting was going to emerge as a strategic metric. We combine deep expertise in life cycle analysis with large-scale data analysis capabilities that generates an approach that's a little different uh, than, than other suppliers. We're kind of a cross between a, a quality consulting organization that you can hire to do this accounting for you. Typically, though, they do it once, and uh, repeatability uh, becomes uh, more problematic, and other suppliers who offer software solutions, but they leave the work to you. We uh, develop a company with the idea that we can be the best of both worlds, that is, deliver results and answers to you that are backed by great science. Uh, we focus on three levels of product, enterprise, product modeling, and supply chain metrics. And today, of course, we'll be talking about the supply chain metrics approach. Greenhouse gases fall into six primary gases that we measure. All of them uh, impact global warming, of course, and those gases then are converted to CO2 equivalents, so we have a common, consistent measure of your greenhouse gas emissions across your enterprise and your supply chain. What we've found for many companies is that supply chain emissions are strategic, and they're strategic for a, a specific set of customers. Those are uh, companies that make something you can touch and feel, discrete manufacturing, construction, packaged foods, packaged goods in general, uh, computers and telecom. In these kinds of, of, of businesses, the supply chain uh, carbon emissions are typically 70 to 90 percent of, of total emissions and they're where the opportunities for innovation, uh, revenue generation, and cost reductions lie. These, these emissions um, can be harder to get at because they require a fairly in-depth analysis and then potentially working directly uh, with suppliers. So I'll be talking today about uh, how that's happening today. Carbon sources, as we mentioned, most of them are in the supply chain. There's actually two uh, different levels of supply chain. Upstream, which is where uh, your materials and products and processes lie in creating products. Uh, your direct emissions in the middle here, that is your uh, electricity and direct use. And then supply chains emissions that are downstream. The cases that I'm addressing today are going to be focused on upstream and in incorporate uh, internal scope one and two, or your direct emissions and electricity. Uh, we're not uh, talking about cases today uh, using downstream emissions or looking at downstream, though that can be a critical factor as well as products are designed and developed and something that uh, Climate Earth also uh, practices. 
So let's take a look at carbon metrics and in general and the power uh, that these new metrics uh, can bring to, to looking uh, at your company through a new lens. Uh, first of all, there's two classes of, of reporting or uses of, at the highest level, two classes of, of carbon metrics. The first is for external reporting, like we've seen at the Carbon Disclosure Project and in CSR reporting. Uh, generally, uh, these reports are used for analysis of and, and looking at how the company is doing from an environmental perspective. Uh, internal use, where the numbers uh, really begin to focus on efficiency and effectiveness in your supply chain, is where these metrics uh, become highly strategic. Uh, so let's look at some of the uh, some of these metrics and how they can be applied. Typically, um, our customers first want to look across their entire enterprise and supply chain to understand what is strategic. In this case, we're looking at a concrete manufacturer, and, and as you can see, and this I think fairly well known, cement uh, is the, the glue that makes the concrete is the major uh, impact and, and strategic uh, to this manufacturer. But this gives management a perspective on, on where to focus their energy and resources, and in some cases, on which suppliers they should be focusing on uh, to further reduce their emissions and reduce their costs across the supply chain. And Chris, quick question. Would this chart look the same if you just looked at the money, or is it significantly different since you're looking at the carbon associated with those inputs? This would actually look quite different if you looked at the money. Though, for example, cement is a huge carbon contributor and obviously a very significant part of the supply chain cost. But relative to the carbon impact, uh, the cost is, is uh, significantly less. The other look, uh, then, is to go from looking across the enterprise, across your enterprise, uh, to specific suppliers. So if we were to drill down into our cement suppliers, um, now what we found in practice uh, in measuring suppliers and working uh, to do carbon labeling of various products is that uh, companies uh, begin by sharing the carbon footprint of a particular mix of concrete, but we're finding more and more that it's useful for the, this kind of a lens for companies to begin to work more closely together with suppliers. Because as you can see from this chart, the controllable parts of the carbon footprint for supplier two are much larger than supplier one or three. So in this case, it may be more appropriate for the uh, buyer uh, to work in partnership with supplier number two uh, to maximize the, the potential impact for lower carbon emissions lower costs over time, and a more uh, carbon efficient uh, project, in this case a, a construction project. So we find, we're finding that not only is um, carbon in the supply chain critical to a new critical measurement of, for selecting suppliers, but it's also a reason for suppliers and buyers to cooperate more close, closely in the supply chain. Another view, cutting more internally again, is to look at product line impact. This is this says let's take a look at, at carbon across various product lines, and and this is yet another lens to look at where an enterprise uh, might want to might want to focus their strategic uh, efforts, uh, because carbon is a great metaphor for fossil fuel use, and most companies believe that fossil fuel is going to increase in price over the next couple of years. Understanding your carbon, uh, your high carbon intensity products gives you a lens to begin to prioritize where you might want to redesign, remanufacture, or look for mat new materials to reduce that carbon impact and insulate uh, your products from uh, future profit erosion.